Hello, BookTube. I'm once again double dipping on BookTube events in an attempt to gain a little bit of momentum. <laughs> BookTube is crowded with events in March, and two of them I'm directly involved in. I'm trying to be involved in a lot of them, but two of them I am nominally a co-host. <laughs> One of them is uh, a new BookTube event, uh, There's No Place Like Rome, which celebrates ancient Rome, its history, its fiction, its pastiches, everything that you could find in a book on ancient Rome. And the other is an old BookTube event, uh, March Mystery Madness, which is in its ninth year. And I'm once again combining those two things in an attempt. I might I might do this through the weekend in an attempt to get back on single book footing so that I can give you what you deserve, which is two separate videos on each of these things at the very least. Um, but one of the prompts for March Mystery Madness this year, since March Mystery Madness is in its ninth year, is to read the ninth book in a series. And men, there have been many Roman murder mystery series, and most of them got to number nine. So once again, I'm combining events and I've gone to John Maddox Roberts, uh, who wrote the uh, mur Roman murder mystery series under the heading of SPQR, which was an inscription that Romans put on their buildings that signified this was erected by the cognizant of and sometimes with the money of the Senate and the people of Rome. Uh, the SPQR series started with, in the U.S., a long, long time ago in the 90s, started with a mass market paperback that was simply called SPQR. The book actually had a title of its own, but it wasn't called that at the beginning. It was just, that was it. And then you got SPQR 2, which did have a title of its own. A little bit complex, complicated to do. It's now in a uniform set of trade paperbacks. Uh, and th these things are... SPQR, the, I automatically think of it that way. I think the actual title is The King's Ransom or something like that, but I automatically think of the first book as SPQR, and it's howlingly good. Just howlingly good. Uh, with a great comic set piece. And the second book also has a great comic set piece, and so does the third. Uh, but the books are really good, too. But they have distinctive qualities. These are the, the sleuthing adventures of a Roman in uh, Republican times, but he is writing them from the vantage point of the settled piece of the Augustan era. So all of his books are written in retrospect. As far as I know, I think all of them are written in retrospect, uh, which is interesting in its own right, because that's a di that's a, a bit of a gamble on the part of the author. You you now know as a reader that our main character is going to survive. No matter what the danger is, he's going to survive because he's living to an old man to write these stories. Uh, but he's writing about his adventures in uh, the turbulent period when Republican Rome falters and eventually turns into autocratic Rome. And his name is Decius Caecilius Metellus the Younger. He is an invented character from a very real noble Roman family. But the idea is, uh, on the part of John Maddox Roberts, the author, the idea is that there were so many of these people, there's so many of the Metelli family, that surely we could have misplaced one and he can be our, our real character. And he gets to know, he, of course, because he's in a highborn Roman family at a time when that meant a lot, he knows everybody. Uh, he has long-standing rivalries with uh, people from Roman history. Almost all the characters, all the major characters that that uh, Decius meets, are real figures. I mean, he has a long-standing rivalry with a figure called Clodius, who is is from Roman history and is features in many other Roman murder mysteries. He he knows and has a, an uneasy kind of friendship with a gang leader named Milo, who was real. He knows. Gaius Julius Caesar and Crassus and all these other characters, all these figures from the time period. He's He walks in their circles. That is the gimmick that Roberts uses to give him entree to these worlds. If you were a gumshoe detective, an ordinary everyday guy, uh, at this period in ancient Rome, and there was a, a murder... Well, it's, it's unlikely that the, the ordinary, what the equivalent of the ordinary policeman, the ordinary beat policeman, would not probably care that much about the murder. There was a Roman official for his district who would care about the murder a bit, but not much, not in a crime sleuthing way. If there were a crime on the state level, well, the ordinary gumshoe wouldn't get anywhere near it. He wouldn't be allowed to even speak with the people that were involved. So you, you solve that problem either by giving your ordinary gumshoe entree at the palace, which is what Lindsay Davis does in the, the book that we saw yesterday, or make that person someone who could walk in those circles, someone who is part of the nobility. And that's what John Maddox Roberts does, and it largely works. Uh, the, the, I have three major ongoing complaints with these books. 
One, I've already mentioned, which is that the main character is narrating all these things from later in his life. Peaceful. He's not in prison. He's not in exile, as far as we know. He's living a peaceful old age. He's not happy. He doesn't like the fact that Rome has become an autocracy, as who would? Uh, but my first complaint stems from that, which is that that tempts all of these books to a certain kind of comfort. And your murder mysteries shouldn't be comfortable. Uh, number two is uh, that because you've set these books in such a well-documented period of Roman history, you really don't have much to have Decius Caecilius Metellus the Younger do if he's going to involve himself with anybody famous. This is a problem that Stephen Saylor has as well, in his that he had in his Roma Sub Rosa series, which is that, okay, Decius hates Clodius, of course. Okay, he does. But we know everything about Clodius. We know everything about his life, and we especially know everything about his death. So... Decius, you know, he might hate him, but he can't be involved in any of that stuff. Uh, and you can't have a sleuth out of the people who were involved in that stuff because we know what they were doing. They weren't sleuthing. They weren't solving crimes. And uh, uh, the third thing is a problem that really comes up in the second book or the third book in this series. There's one book called The Temple of the Muses where it's incredibly obvious. But it's, it's uh, addressed head-on in that first book. I'm saying first. It's the first one that came out in America. SPQR is what it was called here. Uh, and in that book, Decius goes to pay a morning call, a morning client call, on an older and much more impressive relative of his, someone who has been in the Senate. And that relative has nothing but caustic words to say for this, you know, this effete young man. Uh, but also wonders why you like snooping so much. This is apparently an all, already established trait of Decius, even in that first book. Why would you want to, why would you care about these things? Why would you want to snoop? And we never get an answer to that question in the course of SBQR itself, nor in the second book, nor in the third book, nor anywhere else in the series. That's another big weakness here is that I, I have read every book in the series, and some of them I've read many times. I, and that part always fails to satisfy me. The, I shouldn't, I should, I should front load this by saying these are immensely satisfying novels. They are immensely satisfying to read. You will love them. But it is a drawback if you don't have any idea why your character isn't getting involved in these things. At no point, almost no point, I can think of two novels in this series where Decius actually has a motivation to get involved in the crime or any crime connected with the book, other than just being Snoopy. That, that's not enough. Two books out of 20, or however many there have been, is not enough. So that, that kind of bothered me. And I confess, uh, that bothered me here, in this book. I went to the ninth book in this series so that I could hit There's No Place Like Rome and March Mystery Madness. And the ninth book is The Princess and the Pirates, in which we are dealing with a fairly young Decius who goes is shipped out to the provinces to deal with the scourge of piracy. Um... Uh, this was real. This is this was a real problem. Rome had a real problem with pirates right up until around this time period when, if you know your Roman history, you know that the problem was cleared up pretty quickly by one particular person. And that person was not a fictional character in a, in a Roman fiction series. It was a real person <laughs> who decided to, to look at this problem of piracy uh, in the, Roman, the so-called Roman Sea uh, as a military problem. Which, of course, it was, but no one else had looked at it that way. They'd looked at it as some sort of scattershot merchant, mercantile problem. Now, what if this is a military problem? What if, so let's think about these pirates as our military enemies, and they're laying out their siege campaigns, and they're doing it at certain time periods, and they're doing it on certain battlefields. We have much, much superior forces. If we look at it that way, it shouldn't take long. And the person who, got, who thought up that approach, it didn't take them long to wipe out the problem completely. Uh, but it, that person wasn't Decius Caecilius Metellus. So... He goes out there, we already know he's going to fail, but it gives John Maddox Roberts a great opportunity, the same kind of opportunity that Lindsay Davis had last time, to explain some things about Rome. We get a lot of very seamless, very enjoyable info dumping here. I'm not criticizing it at all. We learn a lot about uh, Roman seagoing vessels. You learn a lot about the problem of piracy and how you deal with it. Uh, Decius gets a lot of this in this book from an ex-pirate uh, who's in a knowledgeable position to know but it's all really entertaining. Uh, he gets involved. There's, it's uh, the 
the rivalry they has with Clodius is closed off in this book off stage. It's, it happens with, in just a mention. It's it doesn't get any kind. There's no grand res, resolution to those books worth of antagonism. Same thing with Milo. He gets mentioned in passing here. We get uh, the Roman governor and and a there is a murder in this book. Nobody seems to care about it. I think nominally, I I honestly got the impression that that maybe towards the two thirds way in the book. John Maddox Roberts thought, oh, wait, I'm writing a murder mystery. <laughs> I'd, better, I'd better include at least some of the trappings. But I've, I've never, I don't know them in any book in the series to be any weaker than they are in this book. It, this is only barely a murder mystery. I mean, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody cares that somebody killed it, <laughs> is it really a murder mystery? I, I don't know. Uh, it's still was very enjoyable. I think I read this only once, so the reread was really neat. It's good to spend time in this world. Roberts really creates an invitingly realized Roman world. It wasn't the best or most satisfying murder mystery at all. And it clearly wasn't. It's gesturing in the direction of all kinds of books that it knows it can't be. This book can't be about Pompey the Great. And despite the title, it also can't be about Cleopatra. It, it just has to be what it is. It has to be a footnote in Decius's career. Uh, so not a standout reread. Certainly, I, I, there are later books in this series, nine, and I, but I've read much later books than this, that are very good. Once you get past the fact that our character has no business solving the crime, that he is not interested. Once you get past that, and some of you might have a harder time getting past that than I do. It's pretty tough for me, too. But these are all enjoyable. Every one of them is. So this was a fun reread, but it's leaving me, this and, and yesterday's book, are leaving me with a, a I don't know, a yen to... To really have an experience for March Mystery Madness, at least, that knocks my socks off. So maybe Roman murder mysteries is not the way to do that. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and read two books tonight instead of one. Read one for both of these events. We shall see. I will uh, I will get back to you on that. I will, I will see. I might read, just pick up a murder mystery. Ninth in a series, yes. And then read something Roman that isn't a murder mystery. And just split the two. Because I don't seem to be doing well by that. The other obvious candidate here uh, would be either David Wishart, uh, which never let you down. I could go to number nine in that series. Or I could go to uh, the aforementioned Stephen Saylor. I'm pretty sure that his uh, Gordianus the Finder books got to number nine. So I could find out what that is and reread that. Those are always really satisfying. So maybe, maybe that's the way to go. Uh, but anyway... Uh, that's my report for today. I am once again doubling up on BookTube events in an attempt to claw out of a well. I will be able to sooner or later this weekend. I ought to I ought to claw my way clear. Uh, but anyway, I'll wrap this up for now, and I'll be back with tomorrow's choice tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.